wanted to end. <laughs> Didn't want the music to end. But uh, yeah, welcome everyone to Chief Speaks. And uh, of course, this is Chief Yuya speaking. And I do apologize about the static earlier. I wasn't near, uh, I wasn't near the screen. So I, I see you all in the chat room were warning me about the static. Thank you. Uh, I just was uh, away for a moment, a, a moment. But uh, willfully, it's all cleared up now and, and we're sounding as we should. You know, and if not, I'm sure uh, you lovely and beautiful people will let me know. All right. So, uh, you know, we've been touching upon uh, the concept of of um, of Libra in this month. Right. And, you know, of course, we have a theme that we stick to. Well, we, or we dance around. We could put it that way. We have a theme that we tend to dance around uh, month by month as we go. But uh, this month, we're dealing with the peace of unity. I mean, the peace, excuse me, the peace of uh, Libra. And what that means, you know, what that balancing represents in our world, of course, and um, that stillness that this season calls for. And the stillness that we're speaking about is just kind of like giving yourself that moment to pull back and, you know, like make a determine of, you know, some of the things that may you possibly maybe need to negate from your life and some of the things that you need to add from your life and respecting the atonement um, that's, that's required. And that's really what it's about. You know, uh, like when we speak about um, the million man March, anybody went, you know, uh, the tagline for that, that we called it was a day of atonement, you know, and, and really just kind of looking at some of the things that we were doing as men at that time. And, some of the some of the um, characteristics that were so intrinsic to our nature, you know, as melanoid men that maybe weren't really good for our society, you know, maybe weren't really good um, for us to continue to discern the truth and to support our friends and family and, and, and our loved ones. So, you know, season of Libra is very similar in that sense. It's, it's a time of discernment and it's a time really of, of atoning and balancing out. And a lot of times when we're taking on that librarian aspect, it's it, again, it's very similar to Ma'at in that it becomes a structure, it becomes a pillar that keeps things, you know, in balance so, or, or keeps things up, upheld. And sometimes when we have that librarian spirit that's really strong with us, we look to do the same thing for the entire world and we become um, imbalanced, you know, out of our tendency and our, and our desire and our need to constantly make sure everyone is taken care of and in balance. So, you know, if we have, if we only need $10, but we have $20, you know, we'll look to who we can give the $10 to because we don't feel comfortable with the surplus. You know, we, you know, we want everything to either balance out or to be into in the red, but, you know, having a surplus of things sometimes may feel like a tilting, you know, and not that it is, but, you know, sometimes that's the mistake you know, the Libra aspect and, and, and hoping and, and trying to bring balance to everyone and to, and really what it turns into is just being a people pleaser, you know, and through that pleasing or that attempt or that desire to please, sometimes we, we go too extreme, we give too much. And, uh, as a result, we lose our own balance, you know? So this is a great and wonderful season for us to sit and look at, you know, of course, uh, those who we may be engaged in actions like that with, those who we are, you know, giving too much of ourselves to and not leaving any for ourselves, you know. And it's always very difficult when you start to engage in that type of action because um, when, you, when you're one who gives too much uh, and, you're surrounded by people or a person who may be um, rife with the spirit of entitlement, you know, because those are usually the ones that will have you giving too much. Uh, what happens is that they begin to resent you because their hunger grows. You know, it's almost like little shop of horrors and and the plant, you know, and feed me, Seymour, you know, and, and the more you feed the plant, the more you, you give it, the more it wants. And then when you can't keep up, 
with its growing stomach and its growing appetite, it then resents you for not giving it what it wants. You know, so a lot of times um, when we we're, we're, we have the imbalancing or the imbalanced aspects of Libra, that's it. That's exactly what happens. You know, we become people pleasers. And as a result, we end up um, becoming emotionally blocked because we start to fill up, uh, fill up ourselves with a sense of guilt. You know, um, we start to fill up uh, with certain traits that we even feel unfaithful to those who we we think we're supposed to serve. And a lot of times it's, it's very imaginative. It's you know, it's similar to like a lot of times people call into the segments we're used to. I haven't taken a live call in a while, but um, when I was taking live calls and I would always say, you know, so what is it that you want to do? What is it that you're that you're aiming for? What's the objective? And people would always say, you know, I want to help my people. I want to help my people. And then, of course, you know, my question always, be, well, who's your people? Uh, you know, and then it, it would always be these these really vague um, well, my people, you know, or the people in my community. Well, wh who is your community? You know, the people who look like me. So everybody who looks like you is part of your community. You know, so you start to realize that that vague sense of um, looming and overhanging guilt that I just have to serve everybody becomes your Libraic point of imbalance where you tip the scales into a direction that brings disease because disease is imbalance. You know, wellness is being balanced, having all of the elements that are inside of you in perfect harmony and in perfect balance. And like I said, a lot of times that sense of guilt, um, which is hard for us to express because we can't really pinpoint it. Right. But that sense of guilt becomes our emotional block. You know, because we're feeling like, man, I, I should have did this for this one. Should have that for that. Well, did what and for who and why? And, you know, and, and, it, and it becomes hard. You know, it becomes very difficult to um, really work through some of those emotions at times, man. I, I know that, you know, and, you know, a lot of times because of that blockage is, or, or that blockage that we end up having, um, we start to the same way how we're always reaching out to rebalance everyone. We'll start to reach out to find the balance of our happiness. You know, we'll start to go outside of ourselves to try to find things that bring peace to us or go outside of ourselves to, to try to find things that bring happiness or um, try to go outside of ourselves to discover where we can repent because we have this sense that I have to atone outside of myself. And the Libraic aspect, what, what's, so, what's so great about it is that I guess I could say great, you know, again, when you're dealing with the aspect of the scales, like we were talking about before, you know, that balancing is an internal thing. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, you, you're looking and saying, well, you know, my neighborhood needs to be built up and we have some nice parts of the neighborhood, some bad parts of the neighborhood. And and that's how Libra is speaking to me. And I, and I know a lot of times we we seek to move outside of ourselves you know we, we seek to go outside of ourselves to find certain things you know um in order to repair ourselves but that's not the way to do it of course it's you know 10 times out of 10 <laughs> what needs to be addressed and what needs to re be repaired is usually going to be something internal and the thing is with the libraic aspect of the scale right um Oh, hold on a second. I see I got a little bit of static here. All right. Sorry about that. I had to, you know, handle that for a second. So um, the idea of that that scale, like I was saying, the, the beautiful thing is, is it's a wing, right? So even when we when we look at, um, again, the myotic aspect, because you, you can't... <laughs> You know, you can't talk about a scale and not say mod. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just not right. You know, it's like you can't talk about Nelson Mandela and not bring up Winnie Mandela. It's, it's just not right. <laughs> so you know, uh, but you know, when we're looking at that, that simple example of the Maotic scale, and we look at the idea of Libra, you know, and you know, like I always like to jump around a little bit and you know, speak about how 
the ideas intersect and and how they they come together, you know, in a, in a certain kind of way. But um, if you look at Libra in, in your Hebraic tongue, uh, you have Maznaim. And Maznaim, which is like, the, you know, the, the Hebraic word for Libra, it actually means scale. So uh, even though the, the word Libra is so closely related to, of course, liberty, it actually means you know, in an older form, you know, that, that Maznaim, it, it means scale. And it's the same type of scale that, you know, we see pictured where you have something on one side and then you put something on the other and see which one is, is heavier or which one is lighter. And, and the beauty of uh, a scale like that, you know, um, it affects something different in your psyche. You know, uh, when you see it as opposed to, you know, nowadays is a little different because, you know, a lot of the scales that we may use to weigh food or, you know, different packages or, you know, even to weigh ourselves a lot of times is digital. We want the digital one. You know, we don't want the spring loaded one and stuff like that. But a lot of times when you're using the older ones like that, it triggers something a little bit different in your psyche, you know. But like I was saying, the way we know that that scale is always internal. Uh, is because when we look at again the maotic aspect and we're weighing the heart, we start to realize that the heart represents a junction point. You know, it's like a train station in a sense, right? But it, it's supposed to be. It isn't always, but it's supposed to be an indifferent junction point, right? It's supposed to be indifferent. And what happens is, you know, it's weighing the balance between your spirit self and your earthly self, you see? So it's it's weighing the balance. So if you wanna take it to two extremes, right? It would be weighing the balance, your Okan or your heart is weighing your balance between Eshu and Obatala, or it's weighing the balance between your root and your crown, you see? And, you know, the heart has so many different messages that pass through. There's times when, your higher self or your spiritual self is going to send instructions to the lower part of you, you know, your, your emotional part, um, you know, those, those lower chakras, that solar chakra and that sacral chakra and, and, and that basal chakra or that root chakra. There's going to be times that the higher part is going to send messages down there. And then there's times that the lower part is going to send messages up to, you know, the throat chakra and, and, and the brow chakra and the crown chakra. Right. So, it's it functions as kind of like a balancing point. It's almost like the scale in a sense, you know, um, of your system and in a really base sense. But uh, what happens is that even though all of this stuff is supposed to pass through and supposed to come through, it's not supposed to stay with you in the sense that now the heart begins to identify itself with the actual messages that are sent. Right. So it, it's like um, hmm, if you're doing any type of spiritual work. And you get locked in to the idea that it's you doing it. Your heart becomes heavy, you see, uh, because it's very egoic or or you get locked into the idea that I, I have to save the world. I have to save this person. It's up to me. And you lose sight of the idea that you're nothing but a balancing point. And if you're you're fully serving as a vessel, if you're serving as a medium, or sometimes even as as we say in our Arisha tradition, as a horse, and and a horse just means you know because people get mounted a lot of times and mounted for, for, for the um, uninitiated, that's like being possessed, right? Um, but you know you get a spirit that comes on you, you get mounted like you would mount a horse, and you know it's not so much about you. You're just opening yourself up and being a conduit for that communication, for that process, for that experience, you know, for that energy to come into that space and and do what people are calling it to do. So it's again, it's like if you look at the people in the room who are invoking the energy and calling for it and asking for it, they would be like the lower chakras. They're using their emotion to motivate spirit. If you look in my book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power, somewhere in there, <laughs> I said that. I don't remember where, what is in there, where I said, you know, uh, spirits are motivated by emotion and poetry, 
you know so we use that emotion just like you would use when you're working with your subconscious mind or that olokun or that deep aspect of yourself you you know you use your emotions to program that world because that is the world of emotions that's why we when we speak about olokun we speak about you know how emotional olokun is you know how emotional olokun is so um that's that's the communication in those deep watery depths right so you may send emotion up to your lower chakras or your endocrine system, you know, that that lower aspect of you. And um, you send that up to your higher aspect in order to motivate something to actually happen. And your heart just opens or closes. It, it allows or, you know, it prohibits. That's it. So when you send that emotion through, but you allow that emotion to be the weight and the stain of the heart, then now the heart becomes heavier than the feather, you know, because you've you've locked yourself into an, an egoic awareness where now you believe that whatever that emotion was that you needed to use in the moment, that you are that, you know. So it's it's like when you come into your spiritual awareness and you say, okay, well, I'm a child of Oshun or child of Ogun or I'm a Haru energy, I'm a Sekhmet energy. Sometimes you forget that that's the character that you take on to get things done. But when you completely look to not only typify the energy, but be the energy at all times, then now you're weighing your heart down heavy. You know, you're losing your flexibility. You're losing your infinite potential of randomness because you're saying, well, now this is the gateway. This is the path. This is the box that I have to stay inside of at all times. You see, and and. That's that within itself is an ego thing, even though it may seem honorable because it's a spirit. And when I'm taking on the personality of something outside of me, something that's evolving and, and, and uh, manifesting at a level that I could not imagine. So it must be an honorable process. But no, in fact, you're just looking for an external identity to, to become. You see, which is, again, the, the Libraic imbalance. Without saying, okay, what is the nothingness and and the indifferent, the indifference, excuse me, that um, sits inside of my heart? Because right? when you hear me speak about the Okan or the spirit of oneness, O Okan, you know, the calling, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of one, you know. But when you, when you speak about that Okan, which is also the word for the heart, um, you're speaking about indifference. And indifference is what gives the levity and the joy to your spirit. You know, not the, um, I'm like this. Or like I spoke about last strong, my history has been this. And you identify yourself with your history. This one did that to me. That one did that to me. Let me tell you what kind of person I am. You know, when you hear those things, you already know the person's stuck. They're stuck. I get that all the time when I'm working with people and sometimes I have to give them a prescription, you know, after I may do a reading and I'll give them a prescription say, okay, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to do this, do that. Oh, you know, I, let me tell you what kind of person I am. I don't care. And sometimes I, I'll say that, listen, let me stop you right there. I don't even care. This ain't about that. You know, um, all, all you're doing is, is, is giving me the dimensions of your cage. When you say this is the type of person that I am, the I am represents I am becoming. I am what what I'm going to be. I shared that in a in a book. That some of you have have gotten it recently. Uh, I put a free little I don't want to call it a book guide, a free guide on the Osiris Life site. Yeah, that's where it is to download. And there's a piece in that that um is it Osiris Life? I mean, is it that book? Osiris, I, I think I put one of them. I do so much writing, you know. You gotta forgive me for that, please. I do so much writing sometimes that um, sometimes I I I forget where things are. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, but there's a, there's a piece in the book where I speak about the aspect of I am, you know, making that declaration of of I am, and a lot of times we we use that in in uh, like you know biblical form where. It says, well, you know, well, God said that I am, I am, you know, I am. Well, the, the, the phrase it was translated to I am that, you know, I am what. All right, let's try this again. 
first I'm going to breathe. I'm breathing deep. <laughs> I am what I am, right? So uh, I didn't know if I wanted to use that or what. So I was bouncing around in my mind. <laughs> so, yeah, but we look at that phrase a lot of times. And, um, you know, it was it was actually translated incorrectly. It wasn't that I am. It translates from the Hebrew into I am becoming that which I choose to become. That was actually what God, quote unquote, said its name was. So, of course, you know, those are just stories about us. <laughs> uh, those, those are just stories about us beyond the root, you know, beyond the heart. That's all. So it's the same tag or the, or the same idea, the same concept is your own. I am that which I am becoming, you know, that which I will into being. That's what I am. So when you speak to someone and they're locked into a space where they're really lost because they, they forgot to incorporate the effect of the scale, um, they, they lock themselves into a cage. Well, you know how us Libras are. You know how us Aquariuses are. You know how us Leos are. I know what the cage looks like, but I also know what the key is too. You know, and I know in order to remain light, in order, so in order for you to float to where you're supposed to float, you got to be light. Um, you don't take on any identity cage, you know, because the heart is going to it's going to flow all kind of interesting things through all kind of stuff. You know, you got stuff coming from your root, from your solar, from your sacral, from your throat, from your brow, from your crown, from your foot. You know, and the heart is just sitting there and negotiating all of these different spirits and all of these different energies. And we call it the Okan in Yoruba because it's it, that spirit of one. I'm making one out of all of this. You know, I'm not leaning into to this way. I'm not going to say, well, I'm more of a heart. I mean, a, a crown type of chakra person. I'm not going to lean here and say I'm more of a, a navel type of chakra person. You know, um, the heart says, no, it's all one. We're going to establish a oneness here. You see, because you come from the oneness and I'm the indifferent balancing point so that you can have all of these different energies and all of these different things that, you know, surround you and that go on with you and around you, you know, and you can keep them in suspension, you know, uh, similar to keeping, you know, planets, you know, suspended and, and, and planets around you. And that's with that Libraic sense of uh Justice is supposed to come in. And, and a lot of times, like we say, justice is quick, it's swift. Well, that comes from my aunt, of course, because the ostrich feather and the ostrich um, moves very swiftly. So, you know, justice is swift. That's what it comes from. But, you know, that's the aspect when we're moving towards maybe the more heavenly or the more positive, or I don't say positive, but uh, the more pleasant aspects of that Libraic. But the unpleasant is the indecision that comes from the imbalance of those different spheres of who you are right so if you're leaning more on root or leaning more on on pleasure or you're leaning more on philosophical pursuits or leaning more on um just talking a whole bunch not doing a whole bunch right um that creates an ind indecision because what happens is that when you're approached with a decision then you have to now go through this scale and I, I should say this course of going to each place and trying to figure out what to do. It, it, I'll give you an example. It's like, uh, you know, I'm the example king. <laughs> it's like uh, coming out of a broken home, right? And every time, you know, let's say you're a young child, you know, let's say you're 12 years old. And, and every time there's a trip or there's something that you would want to engage in as a child, Right. It could be a field trip. It could be a church trip. You know, it could be a sport that you want to play. You'll find that every th every time that what has to happen because your parents don't get along or they don't speak. Maybe you even have grandparents that don't get along, you know, two sets of grandparents. You have to go to each house and ring each bell to get permission. You see. So, well, first I got to go to my mother. I got to ask my mother. Then I got to ask my father. Then I got to ask my Nana. Then I got to ask Pop Pop. <laughs> you know, you might even have different sets of siblings, right? Because that div div uh, division is there. So what what's created as a result? Indecision. 
I don't know what I should do because if I do it like this, my mother's going to be upset with me. If I do it like that, my father will be upset with me. You see, but when you're in, when you're that's, and that's an imbalance, you know, I'm using that as an example to show you, you know, those different houses that you may have to go to to ring those doorbells. Look at those as your different chakra houses. I got to go here to the, well, what's the root want to do? I don't know, man. Well, well, it depends on, uh, I don't know. It depends on what, what the brow wants to do. Well, let me go talk to the brow. What, what you want to do? Well, you know, me and the sacral, that's that's really who I, I'm paired with. So see what the sacral wants to do. The sacral, like, yeah, I'll do it. Okay, cool. All right, but, but you know, you, you, know, you got to ask the crown and see what's happening with the crown. Oh, yeah, that's right. The crown always says no. Let me go to the crown. You know, so you're going all over the place and it's creating this supreme uh, hesitation, right? But when you're internally balanced, you go one place, the heart. That's it. Because the heart is keeping everything in, in suspension. And the heart is functioning with each energy indifferently. You know, when you say, well, I'm doing it from the heart. You know, I'm not doing it from the sphincter. <laughs> I'm not doing it from, you know, the crown of my head. I'm not doing it from my genitals. I'm doing it from the heart. Because that's that's where the oneness comes in. That's where that sense of justice is. And the justice just represents a, a balance, you know, restoring and maintaining, at least it's supposed to. But um, restoring and maintaining that needed balance, you see. And that energy of, of congregation, of, of pulling things together becomes more apparent even when you peep the relationship between Libra and Venus. Because right? when we're dealing with the Libraic aspect, you know, it's we're, we have that ruling of Venus there, right? And Venus, of course, representing um, art and 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 wisdom and and you know aesthetics and 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 harmony, you know, and and even nature. But uh, most importantly, Venus being that cong congregative force that coming together, pulling things together like Oshun. I'm going to pull things together, pull things into one place and things that are different and maybe even polar opposites or polar complements. I'm going to pull them together that they can, so that they can distinguish their union from division. You see, they can take their frequencies and maybe even their their certain reluctances that we that they have inside of them together. And I'm going to put this 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 animal magnetism and just bring them together. You see, so you see the value of that Libra is not just segregation in terms of like. This is over there, that's over there, keep, you know, keep it, keep it that way. There's a value in that, too, of course, but it's about pulling things together. And you pull things together by putting them on a scale and, and making a determination as to what should still be present and, and what's OK to let go. What, what's OK to say, OK, this has got to go. I don't you know, I, I, I don't really need this anymore. You know, it, it's, it's OK for it for it to be let go. Now, if you look at the heart aspect, right, and and I would advise any of you, you know, like you want to get deeper into the heart thing. I did a segment a while ago a couple of years back called the o okan the heart intelligence uh oh here we go let me turn that down let me turn that down before they start uh before they start bothering us <laughs> all right so um yeah i did uh okan the heart intelligence right and and in that piece you know i dealt with just really more so the the, the yoruba aspect of what the okan is and and really dealing with it as a realm, as opposed to just, well, it's the heart. Well, but, you know, understanding that the heart is a place, you know, not just physically, but the, the, the heart is its own realm, not dimension, but its own realm. It's a whole nother galaxy, if you want to look at it that way. But um, when you're looking at the heart aspect, which becomes, you know, kind of uh, interesting, you know, especially looking at Libra and the L and like what we did last segment, I looked at the word balance with you all. So let's look at that B of balance and see what we have. And if you look at the L of Libra um, and then take again to the, to the um, Hebraic, you have the word Lamed, well, the letter Lamed. Lamed is, is L, right? So um, L is Lamed. And 
Lamed is the first letter starting off or creating the word heart in Hebrew. Heart is Lev, L-E-V. Lamed is L-A-M-E-D, right? But even though it's a word, it's a letter. L is is Lamed in Hebrew, right? So, uh, but the idea there, you see the, the the immediate connection between the heart and the letter L, immediate. And especially when you see Lamel written out, you know, it's created by the joining of two triangles, right? Which are conversely positioned. So you have one upper and you have one lower, right? So, of course, you know, that's what I said. It's, it's good when you're trying to distinguish the wisdom of things like a scale. And, you know, and even in our Yoruba tradition, we use scales. You know, I have a, um, it's an old, old, old shrine piece that was given to me uh, years ago. And it's a scale. I didn't even know who it was, what it represented. You know, um, I was thankful for it. You know, but I didn't know what the, I had never really seen at that time um, scales and shrines. You know, so I'm saying somebody just cleaning out their house, and, you know, telling me it's a shrine piece or whatever. But, um, you know, as time went on and as I began to learn, which, again, is the key aspect of, of Libra, you know, we'll get into that. But as I began to learn and I said, oh, that's this is this, this is the Okan here. This is why. This is so important because, you know, it's the conjoining of the physical and the real, right? And and that's basically what your heart chakra is doing. It's it's conjoining and it's allowing an interoperation between what's what's real and what's fake. <laughs> basically, what's real and what's fake. The things beyond the heart chakra are your real self, and they reflect down into your false self. Right. That's where the balance is. So if we look at our crown chakra. What balances the crown chakra, the root chakra? I mean, you could even look at it if you decided to look at it via diagram, even. Right? We look at the top of the head and we say, OK, well, the further that's the you know, we want to if we want to top out on our seven major chakras using that because there's more, of course. But what we'll, we'll just say if we top on our seven major Um well, that's the furthermost, furthermost part going up. Well, we may look at the furthermost most part going down. And what do we have? We have the root. And we come down from there. So, okay, well, we got the brow chakra, which many of us may call the first eye or the third eye or the pineal. Of course, there's so many uh, conversations that we have surrounding the learning of that first eye and, and you know, what it, what it rules and what it governs in terms of rhythm and, you know, even pigmentation and, and things like that. But if we look at the balancing for the first eye, right, we see the balancing is the sacral chakra, you know, which is interesting because these are two creating points. We create with our sacral chakras, but make it simple for some use the genitals and we create with our first eye. But what we create with our first eye is the real stuff. And then what we create with our with our and that trickles down to our sacral chakras to create an after effect like people. But what's created with the first eye is that soul expression of another being, you see. And then that other being is manifested much later because it's slow. But that other being is manifested much later through the sacral chakra. You see. So it's just like um, when you're looking at the difference of the crown chakra versus the root chakra, balancing those two together. The crown chakra is when you come into that awareness of the all, of the all in all, and your your placement, you know, in the all in all. Where really the word your is not even, you know, it, it leaves us in that sense, you know. But you 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 become from that crown, you're now aware of everything that's around you and your your relationship to it and your inclusion in it and you know your place and your purpose and and all that there is and then when we look at the uh root it's all about me and i and my specific place and my specific meaning and and my specific purpose and, obje and objective and my specific need and desire to survive it's not about the all it's about making sure that i survive and that i'm here and i'm still present right so if you look at the two of those, you say, oh, wow, wait a minute. That's, you know, those, those are something that needs to balance. They need to balance one another out. These are balancing points, you know. There, there is a time when you, you have to be about yourself 
preservation. Because when we're imbalanced in Libra, we're either thinking too much about our self-preservation, right? You know, we become very rash even as a result because we get so frustrated with our indecisions that we just make a choice whether it makes sense or not. And then you could also be imbalanced on the other side where you just, again, like I said, you want to please everyone else. You want to save everyone else. And, and you negate yourself in the process so you end up saving no one you see so you see the balancing there between the chakras and you know we, we find the same thing if we look at the throat chakra and we compare the throat chakra chakra to the solar chakra you know the throat chakra expresses outwards that vocalization of of creation you know it, it expresses outward those abstract thoughts and those abstract ideas that non-conformity that shango aspect where you know it, it's as as we look at our sacred odu rete meji we have the, the square box and the round hole as symbolized by that particular odu so you know what that is there is just you know i'm sitting on this round world i'm on this big big green planet but i've maintained my contours I've maintained my shape, I've maintained my identity, and I use the expression of the solar chakra, solar is like sun, to express that individualism, you see? So you find the balance there, you know, one is spoken, you know, and one is uttered, and the other one is projected outwards. We look at the solar chakra like the sun, it just projects outwards and says, well, this is this is what I am. You know, this this is what I be, you know, in this space. I am becoming that which I claim to become. So I'm going to say I am with my throat and with my solar, I'm going to say I am becoming. You see, so you see the balance there, right? And then if you pinch them in or if you if you decide to come inward from both sides, right? If you were moving at a, you know, at the same speed from the crown chakra, and, you know, as another entity moving at the same speed from the root chakra, you would end up at the heart chakra at the same time. So you would end up through that oneness at the same time, no different than if you expressed outward from the heart chakra. You see, so you start to see that that Hebraic aspect of Lamed or Led, you know, Lev, excuse me, Alev, that, that Lev aspect, um, why it's so significant to the heart. Why the Ma'atic scene, the judgment scene of, of weighing the heart against a feather is so significant. Why that heart becomes significant, you know. Um, or in general, you know, I, I've seen even some images of the the i'm not gonna say yahshua but jesus of uh, the jesus uh figure and a lot of times you see it with the throne the, the crown of thorns and uh holding a heart and crying blood you know because what does the heart represents where the decisions are made you know it's that balancing point it's that it's that middle point of am i going to move forward am i going to move backwards so forth and so on you know um like I said, when you're looking at Lamed, which is that L aspect, um, which I said is very significant because it's again that 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 those two triangles. So it's that balancing between what is real and, and, and what is the after effect. But we learn that through our learning, right? Or, or we become aware of that through our learning. And Lamed is is the aspect of learning, that L, right? It's real easy because the letter or the word learning starts with the letter L. So we can we can get that, you know, we can get that really quick and easy. But um, like I said, the idea there of kind of um, spilling over into one side, not respecting the, the, the job of the heart, not valuing the job of the heart brings that in balance. So if you look at many different uh, mythologies, you'll see that heart present. You see the concept of the heart present. You know, um, and a lot of times we think it, you know, we, we might associate it with something um, Roman or romantic. So, oh, they have the heart there because, you know, you got to love, you got to love people, man. Love, love your brother, you know, love your sister with all your heart. And it's not that, you know, it's not a feeling type of thing. You know, a lot of times when we speak about love, we're just too obsessed on the feeling of it. 
It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling at all. In fact, that's what makes it so good. <laughs> because it's not subject to your feelings. It's indifferent. You know, it's it's just dealing with magnetism and and congregation and you know um, the value of certain entities, certain energies, certain components matching and mating and coming together. You see that that Libraic aspect, um, especially when we're looking at that cycle cycle of Libra. You know what we're celebrating because, like I said, you got that ruling of that Venus, that Venus energy, right? So. What we're celebrating during that time is the coming together of couples. This is why I did mating last month. You know, um, so you're looking at the at the coming together of these different polar dynamics and how they come together and to create a new dynamic. So it's the same way how you may look at your chakras and your chakras. You know, of course, yeah, your solar chakra is doing something different than your crown chakra. Your root chakra is doing something different than your sacral chakra. But we celebrate the differences and we bring them together. And we bring them together and we create something new. And that that newness or that coming together takes place in, place in the heart. You know, this is how we create to move forward. This is how we create to move forward. You know, and you study the Kabbalah, even the Zohar, you understand that, that the month you know, of that Libraic aspect is Ephraim, okay, Ephraim. And the word Ephraim means like, it's, it's, it's almost like the Kwanzaa aspect, like the first fruits, but it means to be productive. You know, it means to be fruitful. It means to be able to, to spring forth, to give forth, to produce things that come forth. That's that Ephraim aspect, right? So if you know anybody with the last name Ephraim, now you know why, like what it means. I know two people. I, I came up with two people. Melanoid had that last name. So I remember when I first started studying the Zohar, I found it very interesting. I said, oh, look at that. You know, But um, that idea of being fruitful, well, how are you fruitful? Through union. You see, I, I spoke about that when we were speaking about mating and several other things and and the things that are necessary and the imbalances that we bring into our lives because we take on a, a narrative that keeps us from producing. You all know the narrative, you know, you know it. I don't need anybody else. That's why I like to be by myself. You see, we're losing sight of the value of that, of that Venus, which is talking about community and coming together. And, you know, you look at even Libra people, man, they, they can be very social. They like being around people, man. They, you know, they, they, they like to, to drink with people and to eat with people and they enjoy those social experiences. And sometimes they'll fly on the wall. They like to be around. They may not be the loudest person in the space, but they like to just be there with everyone because they represent that pulling together, pulling everyone together and creating those different unions so everyone can um, kind of uh, feed into that oneness, feed into that heart, and then they can synthesize that and produce something with that, you see? So that's why even when we look at that month, that Libraic month and, and our Zohar, we find out that it's Tishrei, Tishrei, T I S. -E. H R E I Tishrei, right? And um Tishrei, it, it, it represents union, right? But this was the aspect of that union where uh the most high joined itself with Israel. Okay, right now, you know, again, I'm going by the book, so I know sometimes when people tune in <laughs> a little late, they say, Well, it's a Hebrew channel. No. <laughs> well, I guess in a sense you can say it is, but that's that's another dis another discussion. But uh, no, no, no. We just use different things to understand different things, and we use different things to show you how those different things are the one thing, right? Kind of like putting things on my odd scale, kind of like you know going through the heart, right? And taking so many different traditions that claim to be ancient, studying them, learning them, la med l learning. And putting them out before you, removing what doesn't need to be, 
and keeping what needs to stay, looking at the commonalities and pulling it together into one so that you can now produce something, right? Well, I just, you know, that's the whole Libra thing right there. I mean, I could have probably just said that and, and ended everything, <laughs> but that's really the, the the whole aspect of it, of how it works. But like I said, you know, you have that aspect in, in Tishrei, you know, where it represents when the Most High comes together with, with, with Israel, right? So it's still that marriage, it's still that union, but the Most High coming together with, with Israel, it's, you know, again, spirit joining with matter or Shiva joining with, with Shakti, right? Which is just consciousness joining itself with power or, or Sir joining together with Oset, Yimunja joining together with Obatala. You see, it's just, it, it represents that same type of uni, union, excuse me, of that consciousness or that unseen where, you know, that, that land of causation or that world of causation comes together with the land of effect, right? So it's the same thing when you're balancing your upper and your lower. You're taking your upper unseen and you're, you're balancing it with the effects, you see? And sometimes we live our lives out of balance. You know, we're very focused on the cause, but we're not paying attention to the effects. And we start to superimpose causes that are not really our causes, right? You know, um, I knew someone years ago who used to always cite all of this. It was a woman, and she would always cite all these stories of battered women, you know, um, from not, and not just battered, but, you know, women who, uh, quote unquote, escaped <laughs> from marriages or relationships to go on to be maybe more successful than the person they were with previously right and a lot of times we assume there was abuse maybe there wasn't you know maybe the part maybe the woman was abusive who knows you know but she used to always cite these stories like they were her story and she had a loving husband loving loving husband loving children you know and she created that type of environment through her constant identifying with a cause that wasn't hers. So she would do really foul things to her husband and say, you know, well, women, you know, we got to get our own thing because look at what Cher, she would always bring up Cher as an example. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Cher and Sonny Bono, probably not. But, um, you know, uh, she would bring that up or she would bring up Tina Turner, you know, and, and things like that. And and I would tell her, but like, that's not your story, though. That's That's someone else's story. But you're trying to own their cause, but you're not looking at your own actual truthful causes and the effects that those are having in your life. You see, you don't want to do that. So there's an imbalance there, you see. Or or it's like people who are constantly, they have their head in the clouds in the sense where they start to reclaim and rename themselves. You know, you see that again in the conscious communities are like, oh, this is king so-and-so. This is Prince so and so. This is Baba so and so. This is Queen Mother so and so. And it's like, yeah, you, you're claiming that, but you, you don't have the effects of that because that's not truly your causes. You haven't established and invested the causes of a king. You haven't invested in the causes of a prince or the causes of a queen. You, you may like how it sounds, sounds cool, but let's look at your real effects. Right. Let's let's see what let's see what where the balancing really is. So you can't really find your find your balancing point till you learn the truth of yourself. You know, if you don't learn the truth of yourselves, and, and that's what sometimes you hear me say things like, Yeah, you know, it's good to be in a relationship. It's good to have someone to love, you know, and, and you can't, you know, stop using these surrogate people. You know, uh, well, I got a, you know, I got a close relationship with my sister or with my auntie. It's not the same thing, man. They're not going to balance you in the same way. They're not going to reflect you in the same way. So if you if you don't have that, it's difficult to find your truth. You know, your truth is found through that union like that. So once you find that, then you find out what you have to balance out with. You say, oh, that's how I really am. That's how I act. <laughs> you know, that's the effect that I have on people. You know, I had a... a um, one of my my um family members, he used to say that 
Timmy, you know, years ago before he transitioned. But he would say, you know, if you want to know what people think about you, look at their face when when you walk in the room. And you, you know, he would say, if you well, you know, he would say, if you want to know how you are, <laughs> like, you know, you want to know how you are, like, what kind of person you are, just look at people's face when you walk in the room. I tell you right there, you know. But a lot of times we we ignore that. We don't want to look at it because we've fixated ourselves upon an imbalance. You see. We fixated ourselves upon an imbalance. And then sometimes our fixation is, is the effect, right? We ignore all of our divine gifts. We ignore all of our unseen potential or our, our unseen abilities because we're stuck on the effect. Oh, man, you know, I I went out there, man, and, you know, messed up this money, tried to do this little money hustle and, you know, flipped these counterfeit bills and got caught and, Ended up doing, you know, some time and, you know, man, I'm now, you know, da, 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 da. you know, or, you know, uh, I, I would love to get into the tradition, man, but I got ripped off so much, man. You know, I done invested already forty, fifty thousand dollars in a research tradition and man, I don't want nothing to do with it. Well, that's what happens when you don't learn, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what happens when you don't you don't use the integrity and the character of your own instinct. When you ignore it because you want something, you desire something so badly. So, you know, you'll be met with that. You know, so a lot of times we may look at the effects, ignore the cause. There's an imbalance in there, too. So it, it, it's it's similar to like a 12 step program. Right. We can't. Help you <laughs> until you admit that you have a problem. Right. And that admission of a natural problem, you know, in order for you to do that, you're going to have to face some truths. And then once you face those truths, we can tell you how now to counteract what it is that your problem actually is. But if there's never any admission of a problem, we have we, we can't work with you. You see, or again, if you're claiming someone else's effects, if you're claiming someone else's causes. You know, we, we, we can't work with you. We can't do anything with you. You see, so so that that's a part of that Libraic imbalance because there's no true union. There's no true marriage of consciousness with power. You know, remember the power when, when we're affecting things. It's not the spirit. You know, I know we, we like to believe that because it's. It helps to support some of the crap that goes on in our lives. You know, we say, oh, man, and, you know, somebody put a spirit on me, man. And this is happening to me. That's happening. The spirit can't do anything unless it's fed. It can't do anything in the physical world unless it's fed. It can it can punch you in the stomach. It can hit you with a, an astral pipe. You know, it, it could get some uh, some apparitional divine uh, uh, brass knuckles and go upside your head. You ain't going to feel none of it. It has to be fed something physical to come into the physical, right? But a lot of times we use the spiritual energies as a scapegoat. Man, somebody put something on me. That's why this is happening. Well, let's look at your life. Let's look at what you've done. And most of the time when you do that, some people get quiet. They don't want to hear that part. <laughs> you know, when they have to start owning their effects. And if you own your effect and you truly own your effect, and then look for the balancing of it. Well, this happened. So what must, what what would cause this? And just look internally. Then now you start coming into a place of balance, even if you're unpleasant, even if you're unhappy about the truths that you've had to face. But people don't want to do that. They look at horrible situations in their life. They, the first thing, what do they do? They blame someone else. First thing. You see, but your ex-wife. Is not your crown chakra. Your ex-boyfriend or your ex-husband is not your crown chakra. If you did something foolish from your root chakra because you were being greedy, you know, because you, you were operating from a perspective of lack, you know, or from a deficit mindset, or you were being lustful, or you allowed your animal urges to completely take over you and rule your life, you can't look at your root chakra 
and say, yeah, you know, I did these things through my root chakra and then look at someone else's crown chakra and said it's because I was, you know, following that or balancing with that. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't work that way. Your root chakra behavior is going to be a response to your crown chakra urgings and nudging. And if your heart allowed it to come through or not. So you might say, yeah, man, I went out there and called myself a stick up kid. I was trying to get some some jewelry. I wanted to get fly. <laughs> so I, I, I was trying to get me this Cuban. They wanted 12 grand for it, man. So I figured, you know, I go rob the check cashing spot. But you know your crown was saying, bruh, you don't have to do that. Just hold out. You don't have to do that. Matter of fact, this is what you do. Get yourself a fake chain. <laughs> get a couple hundred dollars. Get yourself some Fugazi gold. Take a couple of pictures on Instagram and then go take it back. Get some rented jewelry. It has the same effect. Bro, you ain't got to do that. But you ignored that. Right. You ignored it because I got to have it. I got to have it. Right. Ed O.G. and the Bulldogs. I got to have it. Right. So you go and then it doesn't work out for you. And then what do you start doing? You say, well, you know, the reason I robbed the check cashing spot, man, because my father wasn't around when I was young, man. I didn't I didn't have a strong male. <laughs> I have a strong male role model in my house, man. And, you know. This is the only way I know how to do it. It's the only way I know how to get it. Would you stop lying? Stop lying. <laughs> You've seen other people get things other ways. You know, we allow a lot of times for those imbalances in our excuses, man. You know, I've had a lot of some of my own associates who've said things like, yo, why are you out here done? Yo, man, it's the only way I know how to get it. What are you talking about? We, we used to watch the Cosby show together. What are you talking about? You know, there's other ways to get it. You know, we used to hang out in, in front of the gambling spot or we used to hang out in front of the barber shop or in front of Poppy's, in front of the, the corner store bodega. Poppy was getting it. He was making money. You know, uh, the lady who owned the gambling spot, she was making money. The dudes who owned the barber shop, they were making money. You know, the cats in the chicken store, they were making money. What do you mean? So you mean to tell me the only way you've ever seen people get money is selling drugs or robbing people? That's all you've ever witnessed? You sound stupid right now. We used to get told to get off the corner by cops who were making money. Not that I'm telling you to go be a cop, but I'm just saying. So you're not owning your own causes. You see? No, you went out there to do that because that's what the alphas in your area did. You know, that's what that's about. You were trying to prove something. You're trying to prove you're an alpha. Yeah, yeah, I got a gun. Or, yeah, I went up north. Yeah, I, I went through those iron gates, man. I rode that bus. I've been to Rikers. Yeah. You know, I was in the worst building in Rikers. You know, you want to have those those type of stories, you see, but not really owning what the true cause is of you living something like that or experiencing something like that. Right. You see, so that's a part of that Libraic aspect, that balance where you finally marry your consciousness to your actions in a real way. And if you look at your con at, at your actions and say, man, I, I, I keep doing some low vibrational things, man, I keep I keep messing up, <laughs> you know, and every time I try and I try again, man, it's like bad luck is my best friend. I just I can't seem to get it right. At some point, you got to travel up, man, through that heart and look at the data that the heart has been holding. And the heart may say to you, I've been holding all this information for you. You won't accept it. We actually have a, a stoppage at this point of information. Even your ancestors have told me things to send down to you and you won't listen. Oh, oh, OK, OK. That's why when we get conscious, we start doing some rituals, we can't sleep. You know, we're trying to get in touch with Chief Yu, y'all. Man, I keep having these visions. I keep having these dreams. Yeah, that's all the stuff that's been backed up all these years that you've been ignoring. That's what that is. You see, those are all the causes that you could have had if you if you opened up and revved up that heart. 
if you opened up your heart to the indifference of things, if you didn't seek to own everything and to govern everything with with the the auspices of your own ego, you know, if you were willing to be identityless, you know, to lose that in order for you to take on a different type of spiritual charm, you know, if you could take that wisdom and advice from the higher aspects of yourself, then your effects would be so much different, you see? So, so that's why, like I said, when we look at that aspect of that month of Tishrei and our Hebraic, you know, and, and we see the connection there, we say, oh, okay, that's the, that's the marital aspect of, you know, that, that again, that, that consciousness, or again, you know, as, as it teaches you in the Zohar, you know, I'm, I'm playing with the words a little bit just to kind of, <laughs> kind of keep us in the Anu groove. But if, if you study it, it will tell you the marriage between God and Israel, you know, but you, you guys know, I don't like to, that, that word God is so tricky and it can be very oppressive if not used correctly. You know, God is like a damn, excuse me, like God, God is like a, like a flat iron. You know, you leave that thing on the stove too long, you know, it, it could do something cool for you for a moment, you know, give you a little bit of extra length or it could burn the mess out of your scalp and your ears and, you know, leave them, them burn bars on your forehead, you know? So the word God is, is, um, very similar, you know, it, it, it can be used in a way where it leverages, um, the measurement of some good things in your life, but it could also be used in a way where it keeps you very weak, re- very weak and, uh, keeps you away from, um, a Tony real atonement, real atonement, you know, even like the idea, if you don't understand it, like I, I spoke about that in segment some time ago, it was a while ago, I spoke about original sin and the validity of that. And someone listening, not listening, someone hearing, because you know how people do, not understanding what the heck I was saying was like, yeah, I was following him. Do you start talking about the original sin stuff? We need to get away from that Christianity. I wasn't talking about Christianity. Open your, your ears. You got to listen to what's being said. You know, that's part of our problem. Sometimes we, we have no patience. We don't know how to learn because we don't really have love for each other. We don't understand that if you're talking, I'm talking. If I'm talking, you're talking. So might as well listen because <laughs> we're a reflection of each other. You know, we, we come into each other's space for for a reason. Right now, all of you hearing me speak are hearing yourself speak. That's why you always contact me when you or when you're getting your reading from me. Say first, chief, the first thing I want to say is this. I swear it was like you were talking to me. I was like, man, does chief have a camera in my house somewhere? How did he know this is exactly what I'm going through? Yeah, man, because you manifested this moment. The all manifested this moment. You see? If if you go and you walk in some mud, you know, do you think your left foot is, is and your right foot are looking at each other and say or or texting each other like, son, you ain't gonna believe where I'm at right now. Yo, he got me in some mud. What? Son, you ain't you ain't gonna believe where I'm at right now. My Ori got me in some mud. What? You in mud too? Yo, this is getting spooky. This is getting spooked. We're both in the mud. You think that's what happens? <laughs> or if they recognize that we're parts to a whole. So, you know, we're going to bring situations and experiences together that we're going to experience in, in joint form because we're a part of one large body. You see? So, you may have, let me look in here. You may have uh, Mama Sadaka, who's in this in this space. And then you may have Sister Sister Andrea Adams, who's in this space. And let's say you have Marvin the Magi, and I'm just looking in the chat room. <laughs> and 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 Haru Wajet, right? And Sin of Men, and and Fase and Brother Byron. And and we look at all these people and we say, well. You know, we're living different experiences, right? You know, some of us are not even on the same continent or we're on, we're on different parts of the continent, you know, and, and things like that. So, you know, 
even though I know Chief is talking to everyone, it sounds like he was talking to me. Well, that division that you have amongst you is the disease of the body. You see, because you're leaning too much on you. You don't realize by accepting the conglomerate of us all, we bring health. We bring wealth too, because remember, then we connect with that Venus energy. That's little Shuna, and, we, and the money comes. But it comes through that unity. You see? So if I see you all in the chat room or or if I speak to you, whatever, we're part of the same body. And everyone can be a part of the body. And, you know, through that Libraic season, sometimes people are at it. And sometimes people got to go. You know, sometimes I have to send out that, you know, some of you listening who are not in I know anymore, you've gotten a letter. You know, sometimes I got to send out the suspension letters. Sometimes I got to send out the expulsion letters. You can't come back. Right. And then sometimes I'm vibing with a new member. And, you know, and they just telling me about their journey and or I'm welcoming them and welcoming them in. And yeah, you know, and boom, 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 boom. And, you know, soak up the resources and get in touch with people. And, da, 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 you know, so it's. It's it's a balancing. It's it's a death and it's a life. And that's really what the balance is between the unseen and the seen is, or the higher chakras and the lower chakras. Your higher chakras are life, your lower chakras are death. Because the moment you manifest in those lower chakras, they're ending, they're dying. You know, it's very similar to, to your your emotions versus your feelings. Right? You can have a feeling your entire life. You can be born with a feeling and die with that same feeling. Emotions come and go. You could be happy, you know, and you could move into that space of happiness. You could be, you know, mad, move into the space of mad, and then you stop. You move into a different one, and you go to a different one. You're gonna, and you hop around with it. You know, you keep it moving around. But a feeling, man, you might have a, you might feel weak your entire life. You might feel, you know, um, discarded your entire life. You might feel unwanted. And you might be happy. You might be with a room full of friends, man, drinking, drinking some good wine, you know, smoking some good herb <laughs> and still feel unwanted while you're experiencing the emotion of happiness. You see, so there's always that marriage that's going on between the eternal and the temporal. And we're balancing the two together. But when you put your focus and your balance on one of them, um, disproportionately, then what happens is you begin to create disease. So it's just like me. If every time I got on here and I started speaking and I just, uh, talked about myself, right. Then if, <laughs> if you would be so gracious as to listen to that, you know, I would be creating sickness in the body that we both exist in because I'm focusing on myself too much. You know, it's like when when people um, they start working out and they start falling for that protein, you know, in protein myths, you know, and they start taking in too much protein. What happens when you're taking too much protein? It turns into acid inside of your body. You don't need that much protein, <laughs> you know, but you're focusing on one thing. I'm trying to build muscle, trying to build muscle. Or you start taking those hyd uh, hydroxy cut pills because you're trying to get all that water weight out of your body. Well. That water and fat is there for a reason. You, you need some of that. You know, so, but you're focused on one thing, man. I want to look good this summer, man. I want to be able to take my shirt off or, you know, whatever, whatever you know, of course, your, your goal is. But sometimes what happens is that when you're placing your leanings again on one aspect too much, then it creates that sickness. You know, like if any of you have ever done any type of physical exercise, you notice if you if you put when when you get to that point of fatigue, if you put all of your attention to the part of your body that's fatiguing, let's say if you're jogging, you're on a treadmill and you just start thinking about how much your calves are burning or how much your shins feel like, you know, they're about to break from from the weight of you coming down on them, you know, then. You will convince yourself, I got to stop, man. I got to stop. I'm going to break my, my, my ankle doing this. So you might have some shin issues, you know. But if you take your attention and focus it on your overall structure, 
while you know you could be on a treadmill and that could be burning but you could be you you you, you start breathing and you you're feeling those those lungs expat and you know extracting and 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 expand and you and you know contract and expand excuse me and you're feeling that and and you're feeling that that rhythm that you get going with your arms and you know overall you, you're just feeling a different way of your body and and how you're gonna feel and maybe even look when you're done you notice how you can always go just a little further just a little further you know you might even do the, do the cool down <laughs> on a treadmill you might even not just hit that red stop button. you might say you know what I, i'm gonna even do that little three minute cool down <laughs> because you you've become more aware of the whole you see and your placement in the hole and the placement of the shins in the hole and the lungs in the hole and the arms in the hole and the shoulders in the hole which allows you the capacity of seeing and understanding both sides that's the balance well i'm gonna have to burn and hurt a little bit now so i can feel a little bit better later i'm gonna have to kill uh or allow uh maybe some of this sloven this the slovenly um, nature that I've taken on. I'm about to allow some of that to die so I can take on a more upbeat and get to it and motivated nature and attitude. That's the balance of it, you see? But I, I can't just keep, I can't exist inside of comfort all the time. I can't exist inside of discomfort all the time. That's why you got to take days off in between, you know, to allow for that recovery and to allow for your muscles to grow and 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 things like that, you see? So the balance becomes key, not just in, you know, of course, having better relationships. We always want better relationships, of course, and, you know, to be able to to do things like that. But it becomes key when you want to heal yourself, when you're sick. You're always sick because of an imbalance. You're always diseased because of an imbalance. When things are balanced, you won't be diseased. But you can't heal yourself until you you face the truth of yourself. And you face that through the indifference of the heart, through the indifference of love. You see? It's like when you have a child, you know, a child ain't got to do anything. Your, your love, like we say, my love is conditional, unconditional. No, it's indifferent. It's going to be there regardless of how I feel. Yeah, of course, there's no conditions on it, but indifferent is a, is a, is a better way to look at it. You can't earn it, <laughs> you know, um, and I don't even know where it came from. It's just there and it's just going to be there, you see. And the indifference is a gift because it means that it's not going to be swayed. It's not going to end. It's not going to pause because of what I'm I'm feeling in the moment or what emotion that I'm experiencing in the moment. It's going to consistently be there. And sometimes when you understand the indifference of love, and you apply that within your own internal balance, then you can you can better accept the conditions that certain relationships have because you're already floating in love. You're already balanced with the love of, of your heart chakra. I'll give you an example. I was I was counseling someone not too long ago, and he was expressing to me. I mean, he was wrought with just grief. You know, his marriage was ending, and um, what he was going through, uh, I was actually speaking to to both of them, the, the, the soon to be ex husband and wife, and they wanted some, uh, I guess you could say, exit counseling. So um, he couldn't understand her level of indifference. It seemed like it just turned off overnight. Like she just, she was his wife one day, and then the next day she, you know, had a had a, a, a security code on her cell phone. And change the passwords on her social media, you know, and he just couldn't understand um, how things could flip so quickly in that way, right? So I shared with him, you know, if you understand how love moves, it, you know, it it moves, it takes the form of of what it's applied to, you know, it moves differently for for men, it moves differently for women, and there's, there's certain indifferent aspects about it that are great. We need them because it allows us to be able to do our job. 
to do what it is that we're supposed to do. Right. So he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, you love your wife unconditionally. Right. And he said, yeah, of course. Absolutely. I do. He said, this, that's why this is this is uh, tearing me apart because I love her unconditionally. I said, right, right, right. You should, because, you know, you have to cover her. You know, you have to make sure that she's good, whether, you know, she's getting on your nerves or not. But I said, here's the thing. Women don't love unconditionally. They don't love men unconditionally. And of course, she 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 got a little, she was like, what? Huh? You know, she didn't like that. I said, no, you, you know, I had to tell her, I'm not your husband. You, your ass going to sit here and listen. <laughs> you know, I said, yeah, she, she doesn't love you unconditionally. She loves you with conditions. That unconditional love she preserves for her children. Because children can be such a handful and they can be so frustrating that um, you have to have that mechanism of unconditional love in order not to strangle them at night. So all the unconditional love that she has in her heart, it was it was rationed out and it's been preserved and conserved for her offspring not her husband. So if you understand the way that love flows and the way consciousness flows, it's going to flow, you know, again, that, that, that love energy or that awareness, the awareness is going to flow from top to bottom. The actions are going to go to the bottom, but the heart chakra is there in the middle regulating it all. Right. But if you first understand that that awareness flows from top to bottom, then you have to understand that the awareness is going to flow through you down to her into the children. The awareness doesn't flow up from the children to her and to you, even though that's what we tell ourselves. My children love me unconditionally. No, they don't. (laughs) So you'll hear a mother say that about her children, and then you'll say a father, you'll hear a father say that about his wife. And it's the exact opposite. It doesn't work that way. You see? So when we understand how love is indifferent because it needs to get stuff done, then we can understand how love expresses and moves itself. So when he was sitting there wrought with pain and saying, I can't believe this. I said, yeah, because, you know, y'all are expressing your love much differently. And she's made a determination that, you know, um, you're not what's best for her and the children that you share together. She's made that determination because of how her, her movement of love is, you know, and, the truth is, she knows that you're that you're replaceable. Most women deal with men from a from a uh, interchangeable perspective, <laughs> and that tears guys up because they were never taught that they don't they don't they don't have that understanding, you know. So that's why most guys, you know, they don't initiate divorce. We you look at the statistics on that one, you know, they don't initiate divorce. They'll cheat. Oh, they'll cheat up a storm. <laughs> well, they're not going to leave you, you know, because you're their life. They love you. You know how sensitive they get at the end. Baby, I love you and I'm going to kill myself. You know, you know, and now you sensitive. Yesterday, you was a Mac. <laughs> you was you was toasted in a club talking about F these bees, you know, F a bee. You know, you was popping bottles. Today, you ready to kill yourself. You know, you get sensitive at the end. But, uh, but, you know, all, all jokes aside, again, it's it's really understanding the way that love moves and the way that things trickle. And and it, it's not subject to what we consider to be fair. So that's why when we look at Libra, we look at balance. We're not looking for fairness. We're looking for justice. You see, we're looking for justice. So if we look at the relationship between a mother and child, you don't want that to be fair. You want it to be just. You know, you want it. Yeah, it came out of your your vagina, so you gotta take care of them. You want it to be that measure of just, not, you know, uh, I make sure they get food on the table and and Kwanzaa and Christmas and whatever, you know, birthdays, whatever kid stuff, or Thanksgiving, and they couldn't even give me a card for my birthday. This isn't fair. I'm not cooking for y'all anymore. <laughs> no, you don't want that. You don't want that. See that that yeah that would be fair, but lucky for us, the world doesn't function by fairness. The world fun- functions by balance 
or even handedness or justice. You see, so while he's sitting there whimpering and crying, I loved you. And uh, how could you? Yeah, it is devastating. It's very devastating for a man. That's why I try to tell brothers, man, keep playing around out here. You only got two heartaches. After two heartaches, uh, guys are ruined. They're ruined. They, you, know, they, you know, they're good actors. They'll play it off like, yeah, it's my new wife. It's my fiance. I love her. She's loved my life. But most of them is gone. <laughs> most of them has been chomped out by the previous relationship. She's getting about 40% of what's left. He's done. You know, guys can't take too many, you know, hardcore breakups. You know what I mean? Where he's in love and, you know, it, they're just not built that way. A female, yeah, she's, you know, she's water, man. She... She's like a Rolex, man. She just take a licking and keep on ticking, man. You know, she just keeps it moving. So, you know, she may have the memory and the stain of some of that in, in, in her psyche, but she's much more resilient, you know, because she needs to be resilient, because she needs to continue to produce and bring things forth. And they need to have their own chance to come forth with some sanity and to come forth with some balance, you see. So her role on the planet is a little different. You know, because he can shelter you and he can cover you and still be damaged. See, men, where our focus and our concentration is, is that we can function while while wounded. We get wounded on the battlefield. We, we grab our gun and keep going. You know, we're not going to cry. We're not going to break down emotionally. We're not going to say the stress. I mean, some will. I'm not going to say all, but we're not going to say the stress is too much and this and that. We're used to getting hit up and still having to go to work. In the dawning and still having to deal with a boss we don't like or having to sit in traffic. Meanwhile, we just found some pictures the night before of of maybe our loved one, our, our mate. Having sex with our next door neighbor, but we know we still got to handle that mortgage or we still got to take care of that car payment, you know, so we, we can kind of lock into a zombie thing real quick, like, you know, just keep going through the routine. Now, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> now, yeah, of course. I'm speaking about our natural positioning. You know, there's always going to people that's going to say, well, you know, the problem is your gender roles are too rigid. People will always say things like that in a sick society. You see, so they'll say, well, maybe you don't have a guy like that. Maybe there's some guys that do better staying home. Yeah, he does better staying home because he's sick in the head. She does better, quote unquote, in the workforce because she's sick in the head. That's all that is. You know, I know those are hard statements, but that, that's all that is. So there's, there's an imbalance, you see. There's a supreme imbalance there. You know, so when you have a guy who's just destroyed like that, things happen to him and he shuts down. He shuts down. Somebody didn't give him that manhood training when he was younger. You know, somebody didn't see him play at the park and fall and buses behind and and, you know, mommy might have wiped the gravel off his hands, but he didn't have a father there to say, all right, now, now go on, man, get back on the monkey bars. Yeah, I know you fell, but go back on. I'm going to stand right here. Don't worry, you ain't going to die. You know, he might not have had that, you know. I, I remember my youth, man, I used to take him to the park. I used to let him fall all the time, you know. Or we do the swinging thing. Baba, push me higher. Push me higher. All right. And then I would walk around to the front, like away from the swing. And they were like, oh, you're not standing behind me. Right. Sometimes I won't be. And sometimes you might bust your ASS. That's going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sing you. I'm not going to sing you a love song. You know, I'll be here whenever you need me, baby. You know, just call my name. Nah, it may, eh, it may not happen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That may not happen because at some point you're going to have to face this world by yourself. You know, anything can happen to Baba. I'm, I'm a strong, intelligent, uh, opinionated <laughs> black man. So that means I'm, I'm, I'm for America. I'm target practice. You know, and when, if you know you got that type of disposition, you got to start preparing your children early. Yeah, I might not be here. <laughs> Or you might be talking to me through some plex to me through through some plexiglass for a couple of years. You know, you might have to get on that bus with mommy and visitations. You know, it, it could be anything. You know, so you you prepare your youth. You know how to to, to stand on their own. And a lot of people haven't had that preparation. 
You know, um, a lot of young girls haven't had the preparation to learn how to ask for things, ask for help, to have that balancing there. You know, so she wants to prove she could do it on her own constantly. So then when a man comes along, she's like, I don't need you. I don't need you. Well, see, you're going against the, the very balance of Libra itself. You know, it's not about how you feel. It's not about how the society programmed you and or the stupidity that circles around in your mind. You know, it's it's about the indifference of once there. You may not like me, but you need me to make this baby. You want a baby, right? You want a child, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to need this. And you, you could listen to brother whomever or king whoever, you know, all day about, well, you know, the women, you know, we can, we can create sperm inside of our own bodies. We can have a, go ahead and do it. Go on. Go on. <laughs> if you that bad. Go ahead and do it. Go and make your own baby. Cause I we we ain't seen no we ain't seen any evidence of that yet. There's a whole lot of theories. <laughs> we ain't seen it happen yet. <laughs> we just got mythology about it. The virgin bird. Yeah, bull crap. You know, so that's what I'm saying. You know, you, you respect that that need uh for balance by respecting the indifference that balance calls for, man. It's 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 not about the fairness of what you want all the time, you know, it's not about that. You know, it's about trusting and, 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 and living the balance of the heart and learning how to, and, and, and the way that that heart, you know, gets into its right places through your learning. So, you don't, you're not, it's just, it's not an automatic thing where you just say, you know, um, I trust my heart. Well, do you know your heart? You see, I, I talk to a lot of people in the work that I do, and when I tell them, you know, they get prescriptions from readings or maybe doing spiritual work, or they could be students. And once I start telling them what's necessary, as soon as it steps outside of their comfort zone, they start telling me all these things that they trust. And nine times out of 10, it's, it's, it's things that they don't even have a clue what they are. They'll say, I trust my Ori. I've had so many people say that to me. And then, I'll, and then I'll remind them, you didn't even know what an Ori was until I taught you. So who are you talking to? You, do, that, do that somewhere else. I know your ass. You don't know what an Ori is. You don't even know when your Ori's speaking. I just, I'm following my Ori. You following your ego. Or I got to follow what's in my heart. Or, or here's, a, here's the other famous one. Um, my spirit. It's just making up, you know, just just a bunch of different terms to say, I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing. It's my ego. That's all. It's just my ego. You see. So now they'll put the cause on something that because the spirit will be like, man, don't blame that on me. There's like plenty of times I've spoken to some of y'all and y'all ain't right. <laughs> And you go off and you try to argue with people and stuff using the information that I've given. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, don't cite me. Don't cite me when you are. You don't don't put that on me. That's your own stupidity. You know, going somewhere and, and mistranslating or misinterpreting something that I gave you or that I gave publicly. Uh, 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 I don't want that. I don't want to be the cause of that. That's your cause. So it's the same thing when we're looking at, you know, sometimes that idea of, you know, um, I feel this in my heart, feel in my spirit. Half the time, you don't even know the difference between when your heart's talking, your spirit's talking, your mind's talking, your brain's talking, your aura's talking, your gut's talking, your instincts talking versus your intuition talking. Yeah, all those things are different. So we'll lump them together and say, my spirit, because then we feel like people can't argue with that one. I can. <laughs> You know, so that's the thing. It, it it begins with learning. And if you're not willing to learn, then you're not willing to be filled with light. You know, learning is light. Light is learning. You know, elevation and awareness is light. And so when you become righteous, it's it's you're being filled with light. You know, so you understand, you shine light on every situation. You understand what's necessary in the moment. That's what that righteousness is. You see, your justice is is a is a byproduct of righteousness. 
or your balance is a byproduct of righteousness because you understand what's necessary in the moment moment by being able to shine light on the moment. But if you're moving through the dark, if you're living in the dark, you're unable to do that. You, you never know what the heck is going on in the moment. You keep bringing a knife to a gunfight. You keep using a sledgehammer to, to, to kill ants because you never can really truly see what's going on in the moment. So your your responses or or, or 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 your your reflex action or what you may call your intuition is always going to be inappropriate for the moment. And the deeper you go into that egoic place of blindness, the harder it is to pull you out. I've had so many people, man, with horrible lives that come to me, chief, I need your help. I need you to help me get my life together. This, that, that, and the third. And then I start talking to them. I say, hey, man, I'm going to need you to do this. I need you to do that. The first thing they say to me is, I'm not used to doing that. See, the, let me let me tell you something about me, Chief. It, it always starts there. Let me tell you something about me. I, you know, I, I, I'm I used to going by my intuition. That's when I'll get quiet. Now, I'm saying this because some of you are listening like, oh, my God, he said that to me. So now I'm going to tell you what I was thinking when you said that. You're a goddamn fool. If you know you're in a quandary, you got yourself in a horrible situation in life and you come to me for help and then I tell you how to get out and then you you debate what I'm telling you with, well, this is how I've always done things, but how you've always done things is what's got you in the goddamn quicksand right now. You are a goddamn fool. Stay there. Stay there. Now, my stay there is this. Some of you have heard this. Okay. See, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving you the glossary. I'm giving you the chief you y'all reading glossary. <laughs> when you hear me do that, I'm like, oh, all right, cool. Well, you know, hey man, you know, or I'll do I'll do something like that. I say, all right, cool. Well, you know, the bottom line is, um, if if you know if you got to follow your intuition, if that and if that's gotten you where you need to be, then you know that's what you should do. And then what's the response y'all always give me? Well, I'm not saying that it's gotten me where I need to be because, heck, if it did, I guess I wouldn't be calling you. See, that's because, see, you, you, you wanted to argue earlier. That's what that is. That's a person who wants to argue. But when you when you don't, when you learn how to balance the argument, it's like a keto. They come to you with force. You go soft and send them into the abyss. And then once you send the person into the abyss by saying, oh, okay, if that's what you want to do. Wait, no, 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 no. Don't leave me in the abyss. <laughs> don't leave me. I, I, came, I came to you for help. Don't do this to me. Oh, okay. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, well, but I just told you what to do. <sighs> and that's when the truth starts coming. You get the size. See, I mean, I could read y'all like, you know, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the sigh will come. Oh, <sighs> you know what? I guess it is. I guess what it is, Chief. It's just that I'm scared. That's what it really is. I'm just scared of doing something different. Oh, okay. See, sometimes you got to let somebody fall over the damn cliff and stand over them and they go and and they say hey give me a hand chief help me up you gotta just stare at them i thought you wanted to walk this way though while they're slipping but i thought this is, wait but you said it was this way but i remember I remember like a mile back i said we shouldn't go this way because the road is closed i think there's a there's, there's a cliff there you're gonna fall over the cliff but you said you didn't you you wanted to go this way so this is this is the result you wanted like what do you, what do you want me to do pull me up pull me up Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Hold on a second. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. You know, you do something like that. So that's when when you hear me saying, okay, cool. Or sometimes y'all send me those messages sounding crazy. You ask me for help. I give you the help. And then you start arguing. And then usually I just give you one letter back, K. Okay? But what K equals is you're a goddamn fool. And I don't suffer fools. I don't have time for your foolishness. So you go there and you go walk off the cliff because I don't have that sixth sense of Libra where I feel like I got to save you. I don't feel like I owe you anything. I don't have any sense of guilt, nothing. In fact, if you reached out to me for help and I gave you the help, you owe me. That's actually what I feel. And the first thing you owe me is courtesy. See, 
<laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, uh, we have to be aware of sometimes the imbalances that come in. A lot of times when we're when we're in a bad place um, with Libra, it's it's difficult in, in terms of that spirit and, and in terms of that season. It's hard to hear things because we're, we're in a place where we might, like I said, we feel that guilt already. So our heads are full of that and or or we, we have so much indecisiveness inside of us that as soon as somebody says something, we want to defend our indecisiveness first. You know, it's, it's like when you're um, when you might go to a store to order something and, you know, you're looking at the menu, you don't really know what you want. And there's somebody behind you in line and they whisper over to you, oh, you, sh you should get the chocolate volcano almond fudge. I don't know the name of dishes, but, you know, you should get the chocolate. <laughs> and you're like, I didn't want you to tell. Like, I'm trying to figure it out for my, I'm trying to see what my intuition is telling me to get. You're blowing it for me right now. So you say, you know what? You can go in front of me. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know what I want yet. You can go in front of me. You might end up walking right back out of the store. Because you didn't want them to tell you. You wanted to come to it. You, you wanted to come to that on your own. So uh, sometimes as uh, when you have that Libra, Libraic aspect, it's hard to hear people's criticism because your mind is still packed up with all the indecisiveness, you know, because you're imbalanced. So you don't know what you want to do, but you do know that, you know, you've invested in your indecisiveness and you don't want someone to take the process away from you, even though sometimes the table needs to be flipped over. You see, the table needs to, to be flipped over. You know, it, it need, you know, and what I mean by that, like it, it needs to be started again. But you're saying, but, you know, uh, uh, like, like you may be thinking about um, buying a new car. Don't need a new car, but you think about buying a new car, right? And and you're tossed between different models. You may have three or four different models on the on the table and different prices and this and that. And <laughs> you may come to me and say, Chief, I need a reading done because I need to find out what new car I should get. And then I and I might just say, I ain't I ain't even pulling out any divination tool. I say, Why are you getting a new car? Huh? Oh no, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, no, I I decided I want the new car. I'm just trying to figure out which one to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard you. I'm saying. Why are you getting it, though? And you see, you you got so wrapped up in that journey of not being able to decide, you forgot why you even getting a car to, to begin with. Or that maybe you weren't even getting a car. You just saw a cool commercial on YouTube and it was a nice L, you know, LCD um, dash on somebody's car. You're like, man, I got the old school dials. <laughs> <laughs> they got the nice the LED display and they got Bluetooth in my car and, and and I got the old school I got the tape you know that you put in the tape player and it's got the the phone you know thing that you can plug your phone into man and man they their car look nice and so you know I want that you know and and I may say well well let's look at this man because you know two months you call me for a reading because you completely depleted your savings and you had to borrow twenty dollars you know, from, from your ex just to eat. And now you're talking about getting a new car. Did, did you get a new job? No. Did you get a raise? No. Somebody die? Did you come into some money? No, 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 no. My, a financial situation still the same. Well, then I don't think you should get a new car. So what happens? The person will get upset with me because they'll, they, because they've invested in their indecisiveness. And they 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 feel like there's a void now, like now they're being left hanging. Like, but what do I do with all this research? What do I do with all this indecisiveness? You flip the table over. You throw it in the garbage. L, Lamed, to learn. You learn to balance things out properly. Listen to your higher consciousness. Is your higher consciousness telling you that this is what you need to do? All right. And or is it speaking through me or is your lower? Are you stuck down in that lower consciousness with your wants and your desires, but you're not able to balance out the full picture because you're not looking at the things that may be knocked out of out of balance as a result of you doing what you're trying to do here. So, you know, it's just just uh, different ways to kind of look at that Libraic aspect beyond just 
balance. <laughs> you know, there's different things to uh, to look at uh, in terms of balance. And I know there was a good amount of questions in the chat. I saw some of them out of the corner of my eye. I'm not going. I'm not going to go into all of them because we have the men's call in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that rock out. But let's see. I'm just looking for a question mark. And I'm uh yeah, okay, here's something from Haru Wajet says, So how is that feeling? How is that feeling that circumstances slash events in life compromised, restored, like relearning to open up and trust or feel unfulfilled in a new relationship? I didn't understand the question. So I'm gonna say it one more time slower. And if I still don't, if I have to think about it, I'm gonna go to the next one. So how is that? Maybe you might say, how is it that? But how is that feeling that circumstances slash events in life compromise, restored, like relearning to open up and trust or, or feel fulfilled in a new life? I, I didn't get what you're asking me. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. Let's see. More question marks. Okay. Here's a how. Um, how do you differentiate between them after a certain age? I have observed others and take different paths and been able to avoid so many bad, potentially dangerous and detrimental situations. I'm teaching you how to differentiate between them. Our new spiritual training teaches you how to differentiate between them. The books that I write teaches you, and I know what you're talking about, differentiate between your heart, your mind, your intuition. Everything that I'm teaching you is that. The problem is most people don't listen. They take the training. They don't take it properly, you know, because they're going in with too much desire. Yeah, I want to learn that training because I want to learn how to manifest so I can get this money. No balance, all root. So they, they go through the training and don't learn anything. They're not, they're not approaching it with a balanced mind. They listen to these segments. Don't listen to them balanced because they want one thing. I wish Chief would talk about this, talk about that, because I need, I need, you know. So it's like it's like my man Bill Murray in the movie Bob. I need, I need, I want, I want. You know, so you have to be able to open up your mind and go for the ride because that's 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 me balancing you out. You know, that's that's you getting that balancing. So everything that you're getting right now is teaching you that when I when I'm sitting here and I'm I'm breaking down some of the mistakes that people are making. That's for you to look at yourself. <laughs> I'm talking to you. You know, that's not for you to say, yeah, I know people like that. Scoundrels. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about all of you who are listening with, with these imbalanced egos because we got a bunch of them. I'm talking about you. You know, everything I'm saying, it's not it's not for you to look at people who are, quote unquote, not conscious and say, yeah, those unconscious people. I'm talking about you. You don't know the difference between your, your heart and your intuition and your instincts and your gut and your ori from an orisha, from an agoon. That's why I teach it. I'm teaching it to you. And I'm not, I'm not speaking about you specifically, sister. I think that was Esme. But I am speaking about you, Esme. I'm talking, I'm talking about all of you. Remember, you're all a part of the same body. And like you, like you said in previous shows, you're a newbie to all of this. So I know you don't know. So everything that you hear me talking about in the examples that you hear me giving and whatnot, even when you hear me breaking down the relationships between men and women, it's, and I'm saying, yeah, part of our programming, you know, we've gotten distorted. So now some of the things that you'll look at and you might think that, oh, well, I thought that's just how we were. I thought, just, I thought that's just how men were or just how women were. And I break it down to you. You'll start to realize, no, that's not that's not my mind. That's the programming that my brain has received by a society that wants to keep me disempowered. So now the next time, you know, if you're a woman and you shout out, I'm independent, I don't need anybody you'll understand that's not natural. So that's not coming from your Ori. That's not coming from your Egun. Maybe your stupid Egun, but that's not coming from your elevated Egun. That's coming from the programming that you've been given to keep you weak. You see, so everything I'm saying is teaching you that. When I tell you that love is indifferent, the next time you say, I love this one, why do you love this one? Because I feel so good when I'm with them. 
Well, do I have to explain that? I already told you love is indifferent. So you 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 talking about infatuation, you know, that that's what you're speaking about. You ain't talking about love. There's no love here. Or if I ask a question like this, which I've done so many times in these segments, what is love? And I get all these ass backwards answers. That's for all of you to listen and and realize and ask yourself the same question. Yeah, do I know what love is? Because if I don't know what love is, I shouldn't even be talking about the heart. You see? If I don't know the difference between my Ori Inu and my Ori Ode or my inner head and my outer head, I can't be talking about what I think. I don't know what's thinking. I don't know what's doing the thinking. I don't even know how the thing works. <laughs> That's why I did that book, Mind Heart Words. It was for that reason. Like I told you, I wrote that book in, in, in a night. It was just on my heart. And I'm like, man, I need to share this. I'm going to put this in the book. Boom. Let's put it up. My heart words. Because a lot of times people have trouble distinguishing between their mind, their brain, their heart, their emotions, and their feelings. Like what I just said earlier about the difference between your feelings and your emotions, right? When I said... Your emotions are, are transitory. They come and go. But sometimes you can have a feeling for a long time. And in that book, I explained that your feelings are a byproduct of your emotions. You see? So you might feel unworthy. You might feel worthy. <laughs> you know, you may feel weak. You may feel like you were done dirty. But those are emotional. Those are responses based on your emotions. Like, um... I may feel the emotion of togetherness, right? I, I may be around some people I'm really feeling and whatever, whatever. And I feel I feel an emotion of togetherness. And that emotion of togetherness may make me feel sad or may make me feel relaxed or may make the next person feel angry because maybe they get a, they get a feeling of, of um, togetherness, that emotion of togetherness. And we're, feel, we're sharing the same emotion but maybe their family is dysfunctional. So it triggers a feeling of, of anger. Maybe, and, and when I'm feeling that same emotion, right, of togetherness, maybe I may develop a, a feeling of, uh, I may get horny, <laughs> you know, because I may be saying, man, I wish, I wish I had a big family and a bunch of children. And we could all sit around like this and da-da-da. I'm, I'm going to make me some babies, you know. <laughs> so your feelings are always triggered by your emotions, but your your feelings are always they last longer than the emotions because the, the feeling will linger while the emotion will transmute itself into something else. So right there, like when you say how we distinguish between true, I just showed you. So all those little gems that I dropped, those little pieces of game, pay attention to them because they're answering those very questions, you know. Um, and and again, I'm saying that the reason I I went into that is I'm saying that for everyone listening. Because for most of you, especially through some of the comments, I've heard you all mix that stuff up. I've heard you all, sometimes even when I'm looking in the chat room, you know, I've seen you all say stuff that makes zero sense. And I'm not going to jump in and correct, you know, no, that, that would be rude. <laughs> but also, it's just as a teacher, that's just not wise. to You got to let people go through the process. But I may throw a little gem about something you said wrong. And the next segment. And if you're listening and if you're taking accountability, you might say, you know what? He just said that, but I said the exact opposite last strong in the chat room. And then it gives you an opportunity to say, well, who am I going to listen to? My historical intuition or something I don't know anything about or the person I just been listening to for two hours break down stuff that I don't know anything about. You can make a choice. All right. I think it's something I'm going to get out of here. Um, Gloria C said, I didn't get the K, but I did get mm-hmm. Yep. And now you know what my mm-hmm means, Gloria. <laughs> now you know what it means. Yeah, I, I, I can be very dismissive because I have to save my energy. And when I see people are not respecting what they're getting, I don't, I don't, I don't care anything about them at, at that point. I, I, I don't like disrespectful people. You know, so if someone takes out time to show you something, help you with something, and you come back and you're rude and you're disrespectful, 
you can fall off the cliff at that point. You know, because chances are whatever you're going through, it's because you're so disrespectful. You know, a lot of times a person's disrespect tells you a lot about why their life looks the way it does. You know, it tells you right there what what the actual problem is. You know, it could be something as simple as this, man. Um, sometimes people send me emails or they put comments on the videos. Right. And it'll be like they'll, 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 it'll be like this. Um, Yo, chief. Uh, so if you're saying such and such, then how is it we supposed to do so and so? Now, now you see, I put a little, my own inflection on it because that's how I'm hearing it. Yo, chief. When's the last time you heard me get on any of these segments and say, yo, listeners, <laughs> I've never disrespected you all like that. So why would you do that to me? So as soon as I see that, I see this person is not even worthy of an answer. I'm good. You know, let, let them go off where, where, where they're going. Because whatever problem and misunderstanding that they're having, chances are it's a product of their, their poor manners. Most likely it's because of their poor manners. You know, so, you know, eh, things, things, you know, things interweave and, and, to, and to each other in that sense, you know. Um, melanin queen, melanin queen. Uh oh, that means she, she must be the ruler of you all. If she rules, she's the queen of melanin. She says, good question. I was going to ask, what is love? Then that would mean a majority of people marry or are together due to infatuation. Or you're asking, oh, then, well, I then I guess you're saying, then would that mean the, the majority of people are together due to infatuation? I don't know. You know, I, I, I would never want to make a blank, blanket statement about the majority of people, why they do things in that sense, because nah, I wouldn't do that. I would be arrogant, um, you know, and then I would be expressing my opinion, which I pretty much never do in these segments, you know, but you think about it <laughs> um, and you melanin queen, like you can run a little test, like ask. Maybe 15 people you know if they can define love. Or ask some married people you know if they know what love is. You know, and then start working on your conclusions from there, you know. Um, I know I I have to say 10 times out of 10, when I ask somebody what love is, they don't know. But they want to hear, I love you. And they want to say, I love you, but they have no clue as to what it is. They start making up stuff. Uh, 10 times or nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10, if I ask somebody, what's God? Don't know. If I ask somebody, what's a man? Don't know. What's a woman? Don't know. What's respect? Don't know. So there's a lot of working definitions that we've been handed that we don't know. So does it mean that we may be doing some things for reasons unbeknownst to us? Yeah, yeah, that, that is a distinct possibility. That is a distinct possibility. Um, but that's why I always reiterate it. And I know it may seem like I'm being mean. <laughs> you know, every time I bring it up, like, do you know what love is? But it's, it's so all of you can hear. It's, it's, it's for all of your benefit. So you can keep asking yourself, do I know what it is? I've said plenty of times, that word is not that important. We, you were told it was important from when you were very young. Your parents said, I love you. I love you. You know, you did, um, what was that thing? Valentine's Day, right? In school, you had to give the hearts to somebody or make a heart for somebody in your class and, and all that, that goofy stuff like that. You know, so um, you were told that this concept is important. But you go other places, you don't hear it that much. Go to the Caribbean. Caribbean parents don't be telling their children they love them. They barely hug them. <laughs> but you'll be hard pressed you know you ask a caribbean child do your parents love you the only time when they get confused on that is when they're americanized and they'll say you know because they'll even start using phrases like 
perspective from here. Like my mom and my dad, like they don't even like tell me they love me. Like, you know, like I'll say like when I'm leaving the house, cause you never know what's going to happen. And I'm like, I love you. And it's like nothing, you know, or they'll just like say it, but, or like my mom will hug me, but like, I can tell like her heart's not really in it, you know? So it's like, you see, when they get that American stuff, they start talking like that. But when they back home, you ask a Caribbean girl back home, hey, does your mommy love you? She'll start crying. She'll start crying. Cause, and why is she crying? Because she'll tell you about all the, all the homes her mother cleaned to put her through school. All the construction work her dad did. All the, uh, my, my, you know, my father, he does electrical work. He does plumbing. He does carpentry. Man, he did all these different things. We have a cow at home. You know, he sold this. He did that. He did that. Man, he worked so hard just to put me and my, my brothers and sisters to school. Just start crying right off the bat. Then you could turn around and say, but did they ever tell you they love you? No, I know. See, because Western love is loud. Western love. I love you, man. I love you. It's you gotta, you know what I mean? It's gotta be real loud. Eastern love is quiet. African love is quiet. It's it's through it's through action. You know, it's through action. It's like you go to the Caribbean, man. People burp at the table like it ain't it ain't about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no excuse me, no nothing. Because there's no pretenses. You know, you burp in front of someone, they say, excuse me, does it change the fact that they just funked up the air with ketchup and on their mouth? You know, <laughs> no. So the, the pretenses aren't there, man. You know what I mean? So um, a lot of times the things that we may attribute to love or, or respect and things like that, we haven't really understood it and its definition or more importantly, in its working form. So we, we become really hollow, you know, we'll say, I love you. Hey man, I respect you. I respect you, you know, you know, or yo man, just, just so you know, you know, um, when you, when you was locked up, I was, I was sexing, I was sexing your girl. No disrespect, no disrespect. You know, you my boy, but you know, the top was crazy. I see why you were her now. You see, we, we do stuff like that. You know, so we're just so used to giving forth these very hollow statements. And when it comes time to show and prove them, we fall short. You see, we fall, we fall, we fall so very short. Like I've said so many times, especially in the earlier segments, and even though that's changing a little bit now, but I used to always say, no, nah, I don't really refer to myself as a Babala. Yeah, I've been initiated as, as Awo Ifa, but um, the people who initiated me were much, much older than me. They were old enough to be my great, great grandfathers. And at that time, and and um I would always say, like, I don't have enough gray hairs to really, really, really claim that title. Even though I technically I have it, but I know eh, I don't it, there's there's too many things that are still in me that are still young and wow. I haven't gotten all my young wow stuff out. So I really don't have the sobriety that my elders had who brought me through the grove you see so that's me owning my effects you know like i think when i said that one time on the show and i said you know there's still people in this world that if i see them it's on site and until i get that out of my system i you know there's certain titles i may own the titles but i'm not really going to declare and claim the titles like that because it's, it's a it's a path it's a growing path it's it's like if you know let's say if you if you just had a baby a year ago and someone gives you a card says number one dad or number one mom you get dependent right are you really <laughs> you know you, you're still learning it's there's still a lot you don't know yeah you're a mother you're yeah you're a father but you know, and someone who's looking at you from the outside might say, you're doing an awesome job. Oh, this is amazing. But you may know, no, I, I got a long way to go. I, I know where I would like to be. I know where I want to be. You know, I know where I want to go with this. So it's the same way when I look at my elders, I look and say, wow, man, I, you know, there's some there's some qualities that they had that 
uh, are very far from me that I would love to have. You know, there's some gifts and abilities that I may never have. I may never, I, matter of fact, some I will never have. There's some things that my elders are able to do I'll never be able to do. I just won't. You know, we, we have different levels of, t- of talent and gifts, you know, and I, it's, some other people I came through are just more gifted than I'll ever be. You know, I'm okay with that. That's cool. You know, but I, I'm aware I can own that. I can look at that and say, okay, yeah, you know. So um, owning those definitions, it's it's about also seeing the balance because you have the word, right? And then you have the manifestation of the word. So you could say, I love you. Well, what is the manifestation of that? How does that express itself? I respect you. What is the manifestation of that? I'm a man. What's the manifestation of that? And how does it differ from the, differ from the manifestation of a woman or different from the, from the manifestation of a boy or differ from the manifestation of a girl? Because a lot of times when people start defining those things, you could apply anyone to any of them. I'm a man because I'm responsible. I'm caring. I look out for people. I take care of my own. A woman could say, I'm a woman because I'm responsible. I'm caring. I look out for people. I take care of my own. Right. So that means you don't know what it is. <laughs> Because you haven't been able to find the distinctions in in the declaration itself. And in, and until you can do that, you can't create the balanced fulcrum points inside of you, inside of your heart, to own any of that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. I'm just going to pass through uh, real quick. Georgina says, my dad never told us he loved us. His love was so quiet and so very present. Yeah. See? See? You know. We 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 sometimes we look at this Western model. And if it ain't that, we're unhappy. You know, or some people look at the Cosby show and say, Yeah, I would I want my father like that. You see how 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 Cliff Huxtable was always playing jokes and being silly and stuff like that, but he was a good provider. And Claire, I like how she was serious and that's that's not even chemically possible. When's the last time you seen a woman that sober? Claire had no sense of humor. You know, like I mean, like, yeah, if she was getting on the children about something or punishing Denise, she would say something slick. You know, but she had no sense of humor. When's the last time you've seen that? But the father's a total goofball. The father's completely silly. You don't hardly ever even see him work. He got he got time to do children's birthday parties and play pranks and dress up in costume. And people will watch that. And then, then you got what is it, three? Three or four daughters. I don't look nothing like the parents. <laughs> three or four biracial children. <laughs> I don't know how that, that one worked out. But anyway, you got three or four children. All these daughters you living in Brooklyn. You got a teenage boy who does horrible in school. Everybody's living in Brooklyn. None of the daughters come home pregnant. The, the, the son doesn't come home to my knocked up so-and-so. He doesn't get beat up, <laughs> you know, none of that stuff. You know, you got all these this different diversity of neighbors living around. You got the Asian kid, you got the white kid, Peter, you know, Bud, you know, and it's cool. It's entertaining. Yeah, it's a show. It's, yeah, it's entertaining. But you have people who will put themselves at the center of that media experience and believe that that's how it's supposed to be. But if you define what a man is, it may not look like that. A man is stoic. A man is unbending. A man ain't a big, silly-ass goofball that needs to take direction and, and, and logic from his wife. So the most logical being in, the, being in the entire house is his is his woman. Chemically, that doesn't even make sense. You see? But those are the images and the ideas that are perpetuated to us. And then we start to believe that that's what it should be. And when it's not that, what do we say? I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Why can't you be more like this, more like that? You see, because we haven't really truly defined the terms. If we're respecting each other, we're really looking at each other. And I'm not going to define all these terms. I saw the questions were in the um, chat. I've defined them too many times <laughs> at this point. So go, you know, you might say, yeah, but there's a lot of shows, Chief. Yeah, you're right. 
you're welcome. So over 600 shows, you're welcome. That mean you telling me I got to dig through those shows to get there? Yeah, you're welcome. Or don't. Don't. You know, tell yourself how bad you want it. If you're a student, you call yourself a student, you call yourself spiritual, you know, you call yourself conscious, you call yourself deep, you call yourself a king, you call yourself a queen. Well, then that means you're going to have to study. That's that's what those those type of people do. That's what that title calls for. You know. And I don't call myself a butler, so I ain't here to serve you. So, yeah. <laughs> and with that, um, I'm going to I'm going to let we all, us all go. I went over a little bit, but it's the men's call today. I know there were a lot of chats. I mean, questions in the chat. What I urge you to do is to go under the, the video. Uh, and you could just either copy and paste your questions under the video once it, you know, as, as a comment or just type it under the video and I'll answer it in my next segment. All right. So now, you know, next Sunday is the um, students panel. Right. And, you know, those of you who are in like the ministry calls, uh, you have the phone number to call in and talk. And uh, for the women who are in the ministry, all you have to do is just um, reach out to, I'll let you reach out to Brother Zach, and he can he can get that phone number to you, all right? For those of you in the ministry, that means you signed up. So if you're not in the ministry and we check your name against the ministry sheet and you're not there, you're not going to get the phone number. So listen to directions. <laughs> All right. So that's for those of you who want to participate. I know it's not going to be a whole big flood anyway, because most of you prefer to take than to give anyway. All right. So it's been great this Sunday. So enjoy yourself. Be safe, especially if you guys recovering from all of this, this water that we were given, this purging. Um, but be safe, travel well. And don't forget, just because the water's gone doesn't mean the mold ain't there. You know, there's still some stuff lingering. All right. And um, uh, um, cedar oil. And um, apple cider vinegar or just regular vinegar will, will, will do wonders. All right. And to such time, everyone be safe and be well. This is Chief Yuya signing out. Peace.